hello, hello. Today I'm talking about backcombing. So there's lots of different ways to backcomb and a lot of reasons why you backcomb your updos. Today I'm gonna to be talking about updo backcombing for volume. So I'm Heidi with Updo Collective. Love to teach everything about updos, especially to beginners. And what I'm talking about here is creating volume in the crown and kind of throughout so that when you look straight on the hair, you see that nice lift, okay? So there's a couple different techniques to do that and that's what I wanna talk about today. And just give you some of the best tools and techniques that I do to make sure that your backcombing is really smooth, polished, and it doesn't look awkward or like the weird snooky bump, okay? So what you wanna do is make sure first of all that you have the right comb. So if you use a comb that has too far apart of teeth, then your back combing isn't gonna be as tight. So this works okay for um, if you're back combing kind of in the interior, but not on the top. I recommend using a comb that has much tighter teeth going through, because that's gonna give you a tighter back comb and not be as frizzy. So this one is kind of like different lengths in it. Oh man, watch us talking to me during this video. Okay, so. We've got this one, and then also this one has tighter teeth too. So you just want to think about your comb choice, first of all, because sometimes your back combing isn't successful not because of something you're doing, but because you're using the wrong tool. So that's something to think about. The next thing is you want to think about product. So if you are working on someone who's got super slick hair, super heavy hair, um, you're going to want to use some dry texture spray. You're going to want to use texture powder. And so you'll spray that before you back comb because that will help really lock in that back combing. And that's sometimes really the only way to get lift on some of those people who have just really, really heavy, dense hair. Now, the last thing is, is you wanna be really light with your touch if you're working with someone who's got thin, fine hair, because working with thin, fine hair, that's where you start to see all that rattiness going on, and that's not pretty either. So you gotta think about those things before you start backcombing, because not all backcombing is gonna be the same depending on the person that you're working with, all right? So one technique that you can use right off the bat is let's say we're gonna start with our volume right here at this part line. I take just a thin like half inch section and push that away so I'm not backcombing that top piece. So I have something to pull over the top for it to be smooth. So I'm gonna go through and just take about a half an inch or so thickness of hair here. And we're gonna just lift it out of the way. So this is what's gonna come over the top to kind of cover up this back combing. Now, what you like to do here is just take small sections and work your way down, back combing close to the scalp and a little more generously than you think. It's, you can always pull down back combing to create less volume, but you can't make more come up without it looking messy and seeing through it, seeing holes in it, if your person wants more. So I recommend erring on the side of bigger because it's easier to pull that down than it is to raise it up, okay? So the other thing that you wanna think about is the shape of the head. You don't wanna just go down through the middle and do a lot of back combing and forget about the sides. The head is round. Right? So we kind of want to do a rounded shape of our back combing to make sure it looks balanced and really nice and even. So I start on one side and kind of work my way to the other, or I'll start in the middle and go back and forth to make sure I'm being really balanced as I go. But for your sake, I'll start here so you can see. And what you want to do is hold the hair up directly, like from where it grows, straight up, okay? Because that will create a really natural, nice back combing. If your person is wanting like some major volume, like a lot of lift, then you want to over direct. So that means bringing it farther forward from where it grows and back combing starting in that direction. So depending on how you hold the hair, will show you how big that volume is going to be. So if you want just nice natural, hold it from how it grows. And we're just going to go about two inches up and hold the hair loosely in your fingers and push down two or three times and then flip it over. And then following that pattern, continue on. So this blondie mannequin head I have here holds back combing just beautifully because her hair is so damaged. But if her hair was not damaged, then what I would want to do is come back through and I'm gonna use product this time. She already's got some product in here, which is why I'm having a hard time 
sectioning it for you. She needs a good clarifying shampoo. Okay, back combing before, or I'm going to back home after I use the texture spray. So I'm back combing or spraying at the root and then doing the same technique. And it just helps really lock that in. And then following the shape of the head. So you kind of want to stand in front of your work and that will ensure that you have nice, even back combing all the way throughout. So I'm coming all the way out to my sectioning out here as I go and just following the rounded shape of the head. And so as you go, what you'll notice is the hair grows at different angles as you go. So you just want to follow the angle of the hair so it looks really natural. And you can do this until about the midway point of where you're going to start your up to. So if you just want a little volume in the crown, then about where I'm at now will be enough. If you want to have volume that kind of goes all the way down to the nape, then you want to keep this process up all the way down to the nape. So I'm going back and forth between using the texture spray and not because um, for this sake, her hair is kind of taking it all in the same, but you'll have to just make that call based on your client. I'm going to go just a little bit more here. Okay. Now that that's done, now I can pull it all down. So I'm pulling it all over. You can see, wowza, we have some great lift. So this is where you just wanna gently use your comb to brush it down. So I'm not even pulling the comb through the hair, I'm just brushing over the top to get the shape that I want and dispersing the section that I left out over the top. So as I disperse it, it kind of covers up any of the back combing that you would see and you just want to make sure that you don't see any of the back combing knots, okay? I even like to sometimes spray a little texture spray over the top. That just kind of helps lock everything in and keep it smooth. So now at this point, what you want to do, once you have it nice and smooth here, is this is where you check in. And you check in with your bride and see how she likes it and see if this is the amount of volume that she wants. Now the great thing about this back combing is one, when you pull it in, you can see it's got some great lift and it's kind of bouncy, okay? So you have movement in it and you can pin into it if you need to. The other great thing is that when you've done the work of the good back combing in a really nice clean way, if they want a little bit more lift in here, you can take the end of your tail comb and slide it in and just lift. So you can get yourself some more lift by just doing like this throughout if she needs a little bit more. So even if you have it like loosely pinned or you just kind of bring it back to kind of get an idea of how you want it to be pinned, then you can take your comb like this and just pull it out and shape it before you even pin it. So the hair works with you a lot better when you've went through and done that really neat clean back combing before you even start. So then you get really great volume. She gets lots of lift on this updo and it's gonna last all night long, maybe even tomorrow. So if you liked that, if you have any questions, like the video, comment with your questions. I also have a great freebie for you. If you wanna learn how to start every updo with confidence, I've got that there as well. Join me at the Updo Collective on Facebook. I've got a Facebook group to help you out even more. And as always, you can reach me at theupdocollective at gmail.com. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me.